The industry standard method for creating high fidelity 3D models is to use what are called subdivision surfaces. This method is called subd modeling. The most common method of subdivision is called Catmull Clark subdivision, and it's the one used in every modern 3D modeling package. Now, please note that there is an old Maya feature called subd, which refers to something different than modern subdivision surfaces. Unfortunately, the subd term used in the industry is identical to the name of this old feature, so there's sometimes some confusion. Uh, legacy Maya subds are no longer used, as far as I'm aware, um, and we'll just continue referring to the industry standard hero quality subdivision surface modeling technique as subd modeling. So the subd workflow involves modeling using a low resolution cage which uses a small amount of vertices to offer maximum control over an object's shape. This cage is then subdivided at render time as many times as necessary in order to achieve a smooth, realistic looking model. Sufficient model fidelity can be achieved by subdividing the mesh such that each resulting polygon covers approximately one pixel of the final image. So here I've got a low resolution geometry cage you can see there aren't too many polygons here, but when I turn on my smooth proxy in Maya, it gives me a preview of what the subdivided version is going to look like. The Catmull Clark subdivision algorithm works by performing the following steps. First, it creates a point at the center of each face, then, it creates a point at the midpoint of each edge with its position averaged with the centers of the adjacent faces. Then it recreates the original vertices with their positions averaged as well according to the centers of the adjacent faces. So it's fairly straightforward to see what happens with a single triangle, quad, or uh, five-sided n-gon here. We can see what happens when uh, one catmull clark subdivision is performed but we can also look at a three-dimensional surface to see how uh, a hard edge, like this one right here, uh, is going to be smoothed out as the uh, middle uh, vertex, right, the, the midpoint of this edge uh, right here, has been it, its position has been averaged according to the face centers generated for each of the adjacent faces. The same thing happened with these vertices here, with their positions being averaged with adjacent geometry uh, so that this, uh, this sort of smoothing takes place. It takes a hard edge like this and smooths it out. Right, so this algorithm results in the characteristic smoothing of sub-D models. But in the event that the artist wishes to maintain hard edges, there are two different approaches we could take. Most 3D packages have the ability to add what are called creases to a sub-D model, and this has the effect of tightening an edge closer to its original shape. Creasing is not, however, a reliable method of controlling a sub-D model, and this is due to the fact that certain universal file formats, like the OBJ format, do not support creasing, and some rendering engines don't even understand what creasing is. The better and more universal method of controlling sub-D models is to use a technique called fencing, or triple edging, as it's sometimes called. It's important to maintain clean quad topology in order to be able to fence hard edges properly. This way we can insert clean edge loops to control precisely how tight or hard we want an edge to be. Generally speaking, to harden an edge, we just add a new edge loop on either side of it. So in this case, I just have this cube-like shape, and if I, well, if I, uh, if I turn on Smooth Proxy, we can see that it smooths out like this, but if I wanted to keep this hard edge, then, uh, well, I could insert an edge loop uh, fairly close uh, to that hard edge on one side, as well as the other side, and then we'll see uh, back in Smooth Proxy, we'll see that that hard edge has been uh, held quite well. The closer these edges are to the uh, original hard edge, the tighter the resulting shape will be, and the farther away they are, the smoother 
this edge is going to be. Note that adding edge loops is not the only way to fence edges. Other approaches might be necessary, and a good 3D modeler will utilize different methods depending on the circumstances. Such methods include uh, fencing with extrusions while extruding out a shape. So if we were going to extrude out a uh, maybe a hard 90 degree angle on this shape right here, we could perform an extrusion and just leave behind an extra edge loop as we're extruding this out, right? So maybe I'm trying to make something like an L shape, uh, and, I, and I know I'm going to want this hard 90 degree angle here. Well, I could just could just leave behind these extra edge loops uh, to hold this corner right here. Now, of course, we will need to add in a few other edge loops just to finish this off, but uh, most of the work has been done for me just by leaving behind those edge loops. Another technique we could use would be an inset, which works fairly well on cylindrical objects like this. Let's say we were trying to hold uh, these these hard edges right here. Well, we're not, we're not done yet, right? Because we need another edge loop on the inside here. And uh, well, at least with the multi-cut tool in Maya, we can't hold control and uh, insert an edge loop in here. Uh, there's no uh, shortcut really for doing this. So alternatively, what we could do is just select all these polygons on the top here, perform an extrusion, and then, well, either we could use the offset value here to just do a, a slight offset uh, moving inwards, uh, or uh, all, as an alternative to that, because it is a, a circular object uh, which we can uh, scale uniformly, right? We could, just, uh, we could just leave that extrusion where it is, activate the scale tool, and then just uh, scale it in like that. That, in this case at least, uh, achieves the same result, right? And turning on smooth proxy again, well, we can see that that's held the edge very nicely. Another technique that's frequently used on cube-like objects like this is to use a bevel. And so usually, usually a bevel performs a chamfer as well, right? So the, the chamfer is this uh, kind of this slice off, the, uh, off of every hard edge. But uh, uh, in, in most 3D applications, uh, you can actually turn off the chamfer and uh, essentially get two edge loops added in uh, across every single edge loop, right? So on either side of every hard edge here, we have another edge loop added in. And the uh, result of this is to effectively hold all those edges really nicely. However, do take care when using a non-chamfered bevel in order to tighten up your edges. Uh, you have to pay very close attention to what you're doing uh, as it could insert unwanted edge loops into your model. Now you will hear 3D artists talk about the importance of maintaining clean quad topology on sub-D models. There are two primary reasons for this. First of all, when modeling curved surfaces, Triangles or n-gons may subdivide in strange ways, resulting in visible artifacts on the model. Quads, on the other hand, can be used to perfectly model any surface, including curves. It's actually okay, however, to use triangles as long as you only do it on flat, non-deforming surfaces. Uh, however, you just have to remember that triangles will break your edge flow and potentially make some edge loop selections more difficult. However, the convenience of being able to just begin or terminate an edge loop wherever you want, uh, well, it might be worth it to use a triangle for that. The second reason is that on an organic model, such as a character that is skinned onto a rig, triangles do not deform well. Organic skinned models should be modeled in all quads to ensure that it deforms properly once animated. <laughs> 